Hey Magic Makers, my name is Lisa and I'm the maker and owner of Of Clay Jewelry. I post videos on polymer clay tips, tricks, tutorials, and helpful small business advice. So if you are new here, I post weekly. And if these are the types of videos that you are looking to see more of and learn more about, definitely hit that subscribe button down below. Give me a nice big thumbs up and I look forward to having you join the Of Clay Makers community. Now, before we get into everything, I also have a huge, huge announcement. I am hosting my Of Clay Jewelry Makers Holiday Gift Exchange again this year. I hosted it last year for the first time ever and it was an incredible experience. Basically, it is this worldwide gift swaps specifically for makers, creatives, artists, and small business owners of the like to join together in a wonderful gift exchange. You are put into groups of five makers within your country, and it's an opportunity for you to experience other small makers and their businesses and how they package things and the story behind what they do, as well as share your story and your craft and how you do everything and why you do what you love. So so what I do is I curate hundreds of really, really wonderful and talented makers. I split them into groups of five. Again, this is open to people worldwide, so I will match you with people within your country. And then you will swap something that you have handmade that best represents your business. You guys will send these gifts to each other all on the weekend of December 10th. And it's a really awesome experience where you gain a handful of new maker friends, a new support system, a group of people that you can lean on and ask questions about for running a small business and maybe venting about the crazy life of being a maker. You also get these slow made, thoughtfully crafted gifts as an added bonus. It's $5 to apply. Everyone is allowed to apply. I want as many people as possible to join in this year. I will link the application down below. Applications are open now through November 22nd. So get your applications in and I cannot wait to have you join in on this amazing opportunity to connect with the maker community and grow your business. We will be sharing each other's work nonstop on social media, tagging each other, and hopefully we'll bring a bunch of new clients and customers to you you along with new friends in the industry. Definitely, definitely check that out. I'm just so excited to be doing it again this year. Today we are talking about something so, so, so important for small businesses and makers. We are talking about how to prep for makers markets. These markets are an amazing platform for small business owners to get in front of people who are looking to shop and to support small and local businesses. I highly recommend if you're starting a new business to get into these types of markets because it is an amazing opportunity to gain new clients, new customers, showcase your craft and get connected with other makers in the community. This whole video is part two of the beginner's guide to makers markets. If you want to check out part one, I will link that video down below for you to check out to learn all about the application process. So today we are talking about the actual prep that you need to get ready for a market. And part three will be posted next week talking about everything you need to know while you're at your market to have an awesome successful show where you are connecting with a lot of wonderful people, customers, and making good money. So if you are ready to inspire, delight, and connect with new customers and display your brand visually, grab a snack, something to drink, relax, and let's get into it. Now, if you remember from last week when we talked about prep for applications, I said that you need to have your brand identity flushed out. You need to know what you're doing, why you're doing it, what makes you different, special, and how that comes across in your branding. This is especially important as you prep for your market. Your vendor booth is a mini boutique, an expression of your business, your brand, what you have to offer, and it needs to attract and speak to your clientele that you are wanting, your dream client. If you don't have that message figured out for your brand, go watch my first video. I will also link a little e-guide down below for a in-depth beginner's guide with writing prompts to help you figure 
all of that out and flesh that out. So give that a download, check out that last video. When you have that figured out, you need to now think, how do I make that come across visually? When you're designing your display, think about what colors, what textures, what shapes are representative of my brand. Maybe you're super colorful and bright and fun. So you want to have pops of color, glitter, maybe cute lights. Maybe you're more muted and earthy and you want to have natural textures like stone and bleached wood, beige and soft creams as a color palette throughout your booth. So something to think about if you were to visualize your brand as just colors and textures, what would that look like? And how can you incorporate that into your booth. There's so many options, so get creative and think about what unexpected elements you can add into your booth to make it a really unique and special shopping experience. Businesses that you can look to as inspiration, think of all the shops and the online shopping experiences that you absolutely love and adore and just like wanna go into. Even if you're broke, you still wanna go shop there. What does that space make you feel like? What do they do in their business that creates such an inviting environment where you just want to keep going back and shop there and you just feel so good there. Comment down below what your favorite businesses are to shop at and what elements you think make them so special because it's all a science. They do that on purpose. Do that same purposeful, thoughtful design in your booth and it's going to be amazing. Now, as we talk about booth design and making your brand personality come across, you also want it to be aesthetically pleasing, attractive, and easy to shop. Getting more into the nitty gritty basics of design, you want to have your display overall fairly clutter free. The more simple it is in design, the less overwhelming your display is and the more inviting the space becomes. Research does show that people like to not crouch down really low to look at things or have to tilt their head back up really high to get a good view of what's being sold. So having things as close to eye level is so important. Having your tabletop at more of like a counter height is ideal. You can get risers for the legs of your folding tables and tuck them under the legs to bring that height up. You can buy different risers to place on top of your tabletop to elevate your items up a little bit, bring them more to face height. There's so many products out there to help create height and dimension within your booth display that are very, very helpful when wanting to create a booth that is attractive and easy to shop. And again, I am linking an e-guide to purchase and download below. They'll have links to all of these types of products and ideas for you to incorporate into your booth. Definitely research different risers that you can purchase for under your table as well as on top of your table and try to think of ways to create racks or shelving on top of that tabletop to just keep the products up, elevated, and in your customer's line of sight. Now, slightly different than height is depth and variety. So when you're building these displays to hold your items and your crafts, you want to create dimension and you want the eye to continue to travel through your booth with a lot of ease, just naturally. And how you do that is by creating triangular shapes. If you know anything about photography, you always want to create angles, center things, and work in pairs of three. And that's actually very, very similar to merchandising a table. You work in pyramids, creating triangular shapes on your table and grouping them in threes or in odd numbers. So the eye has something to kind of like look up and down and across and it looks very visually balanced and pleasing to the eye, which makes it a very enjoyable experience for your shopper. Just psychologically. So think of ways you can group your items and group your table displays so that you're creating these pyramidal type of visual shapes and lines that will attract 
your customers and make them feel excited to shop, but they don't really know why. They just know that it looks really amazing and awesome. And to add variety, again, like what I was saying earlier with your display and how you get your brand to come across visually, having just a flat table with a tablecloth thrown over it and a vinyl sign, it's a little bit boring. It's not exciting, it's not unique, it's not saying anything about you as a brand or a company or evoking any feeling or passion in what you're doing. So add in a variety of textures and materials. Instead of just laying pieces of jewelry flat across your table, put them on stone, put them on wood, put them on different fabrics. It's really fun to just go through the hardware store, go through Goodwill and look at everything that's there and think of different ways of how they could be used as a DIY riser or a fun, unique tray to display your business cards or your jewelry or any other product. There are so many inventive ways to incorporate that. You can use acrylic, plastic, wood, stone, plants, cloth. There's so many things that you can play with to evoke what your brand stands for. Try to add different materials and textures into your display. My next tip is to figure out how you can tell your story to everybody that comes to your booth without having to physically tell people what your story is. People love to go to markets and love to purchase from small makers because they connect with what you're doing, who you are as a person, and the passion and the story behind what you do. Express that through really good signage that tells your story. Have your business cards out, a short, quick, blurb about who you are, how it got started, where you're from. People love to know your story and will really, really connect with you and that's going to get you to click right away with the customers that you are trying to reach and connect with. A helpful tip as far as connecting with customers that you want, when you're making your product, who are you thinking of? Who do you want to wear it? What type of personality do they have? What kind of lives do they live? Think about all those things and what they like and what they're attracted to and try to incorporate that in into visuals and into your story and into your displays and flyers, postcards, all of that so that it just draws them in and they want to know more and they want to see what you do. Once you have your booth designed and it's representing your brand, you have this beautiful display that is simple, stunning, attractive, and you have great signage that tells people who you are and what you do. Your booth is just going to scream your brand name without having to actually tell people anything and they're going to flock to your booth. Along with telling your story through signage on your table, you also want to get together your elevator pitch. So a really quick few sentence blurb about who you are, what you do, your process, just to connect with people and the customers that come to your table. Having a few different versions of an elevator pitch to talk about when people come to your booth makes you come across as really inviting, like you love what you do, like you know what you're doing, and you're excited to share that with people. If you're unprepared to talk to people, that's going to come across and they're gonna be confused and you might miss connecting with that person who maybe loves your hometown and is from there as well, or loves ceramics and working with a certain type of clay. There's so many elements that make you unique and interesting that people want to learn about. So have some blurbs about yourself to share with people as they shop with you. Because a lot of times at these markets, there's customers that will be customers for life with you. There are people who are gifters who will be repeat gifters because their significant other or friend falls in love with your business and they had a great experience with you and the conversations they had with you. A lot of times there are buyers there if you are wanting to get into wholesale or get into local boutiques and if they can connect with you and know what you're all about because you practiced with these very quick, friendly selling points about your business and about you, it's going to be so worth your while. Every single market I do, I get more and more opportunities to teach, to sell, to be in new boutiques and do other markets. It's an amazing experience. So you want to be prepared for more success to come your way. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about prep for products. This is the biggest question 
all new makers have or all small business owners that are doing their market for the first time, they always ask this question, tell me how much product I need and what I need to sell it at. I hate to break it to you, but there really is no perfect number or perfect price point. What really, really matters is you trying to make super genuine connections and attracting customers, getting them to connect with your brand through the visual representation of your booth and valuing your work for what it's worth. There are people who sell things for five or $10. There are people who sell things in the 40, $50 range. There are people who sell things for hundreds and thousands of dollars at market. There is no perfect point to be at. Know your worth as a maker, charge that amount and have a wonderful story and a visual representation to back that up so that you can connect with those customers that are going to love you. And the best way to break down how much product you need to make, this is exactly how I work my markets and plan out my markets, is how many people can I talk to? And about how many pieces do people normally buy from me? Will I have any specials going that's going to encourage people to buy two or three or four pieces of jewelry? And how long is that going to take me? So so practice your sales pitch, set up your booth and your home. It's very, very important. Practice everything full out before your first market. Put everything up on display, practice your pitch, talk to your friend, talk to your spouse, talk to your kids, go through that whole sales process and see how long that takes you and see how many you could feasibly fit in to an hour, to six hours, eight hours. And then from there, you can really decide, okay, this is about the most I could probably sell at the market because I just can't talk to that many people. And that's okay, you're gonna have flyers, you're going to have business cards so if people can't get into your booth because you're so busy, they can grab your card, connect with you later, and that's why it's so important to have those things on the table. But that is the best way to figure out inventory for your market. You can make a little bit extra so you can keep your booth nice and full. I strongly feel like you should never have a sellout booth. Of course, if it happens, it happens, but it's better for you to have some leftover and know you made all the sales you could possibly make than to have a bunch of people still really wanna buy from you and your booth is dark, shut down, and everything is gone. That is my last tip for today on prepping for your market to briefly go over it again. You wanna think about your brand identity and translate that visually through your display, through your merchandising, creating height, depth, different textures, making things very clean and streamlined to look at. Elevate your displays to eye height so that they're easy to see and scan and shop. You're going to want to display your story through really amazing signage, have business cards out, have blurbs about your story and flyers that people can grab to connect again with you in the future. And third, you are going to want to practice, 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 practice your pitch, practice your booth setup and breakdown, practice selling your items with your friends and your family to get that flow down very smoothly. And lastly, you are going to want to figure out how many genuine genuine conversations and connections that you can make per hour during your market and prep for that amount of inventory to be sold. Next week, we're going into part three, all the things that you need to know at your market. So if your booth is having a sleepy hour, how to try to get things ramped back up so that you're attracting customers, how to set your goals and your intentions for the day, how to connect with people and keep those connections coming long after your market. As we conclude, if you are a maker, don't forget to sign up and apply for my holiday gift exchange. It's gonna be so much fun. If you liked this video, please thumbs up it. And don't forget to subscribe. I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.